he's getting the players he wants in now. I mean, Dekure, number one, as we said, Johnson, Abiyoe, Richards. Yeah. If it slams shut right now, I'd be disappointed. Hi there, welcome to another episode of the Premier League Predictor. Today, we'll be talking about Crystal Palace. Now, it's fair to say Crystal Palace had a really good season last year. They had a huge rebuild under Sir and Patrick Vieira, but more importantly, had a good finish in the league and also a cup run that ended up in the semi-finals. So to talk us through this and relive those moments, I am joined by a Crystal Palace fan who is also a fan of the pod and a friend of the pod, more importantly. So we do welcome Kurt CPFC. But before I touch in with Kurt, make sure you subscribe to our channel, give it a like, and more importantly, give us your comments and thoughts as we go along. And I'll also add to the cards right now our current series of this current episode, as well as other fans around their thoughts of the clubs for the upcoming season. Absolutely delighted to be joined by Kurt. So Kurt, great having you on and uh, let's just relive last season. So let's start by talking about that huge rebuild that Patrick Vieira had to start off with. And that was some rebuilds because there's a approximately around 19 players that actually left. I know we're talking about 13 to 14 senior players. But that's a huge task to begin with in his kind of reign, firstly, in the Premier League. So, yeah, what what did you make of that huge rebuild that Vera had to do? And more importantly, about that whole season? It's incredible, mate, actually. Um, mm. I was sitting here this time last year, quite nervous, sweaty palms. Yeah. Um, we may have had, I think we had Vieira for a couple of weeks at this point. But um, before that, we had no manager. We had 13 senior players out of contract. And uh, the Premier League is obviously the toughest league in the world by by some distance. Mm. But somehow, it's all worked out um, for the best. Very excited to get into this next season. And um, I don't think the squad's ever looked better. So, yeah, I can't wait mm. to get into it, to be honest, mate. You obviously brought in a number of players into that squad. And I think what was interesting was the style of play as well that Vieira introduced because, obviously, a stark contrast to the Hodgson days. Um, because, yeah, when I'm thinking about the players that you had back then, the likes of, say, Gary Cahill, who was probably unfortunate to kind of see himself released. Um, but to the same extent, you brought in the likes of Grehe from Chelsea. And obviously, another player that really did excel last season was Elise, who was brought in from Reading. Again, a bit of a cusp signing because not a lot of, I suppose, fans were sure about his credentials. But for those that watched him in the championship, they certainly knew what a player he was. So, I mean, let's talk about the players that he did bring in and more importantly, Palace. I mean, yeah, I mean, it was great to see how they excelled in terms of not only kind of starting to build that team ethos, but also what they introduced to that team. No, absolutely. It, it, it was it was quite an interesting time. I mean, we let Gary mm. Cahill go. He's one of the players. I'm glad you touched on Gary Cahill, actually, because... Um, mm. I was quite sad to see the back of him. I thought he was excellent for the time he was with us. Um, he raised mm. a few eyebrows at the time when we signed him, but he was a real servant. Um, but countless countless players left us. It's too, it's too, it yeah. seems so long ago now. I can't yeah. remember all the names that left us, but um, some really sad ones in there. Uh, but we knew that we were going to get rid of Hodgson and everything was going to change across the board. Mm. It, wasn't, it was never going to be a case of... Hodgson's going, let's get someone similar in. The yeah. fans wanted different football. The club wanted different football, including Steve Parrish, of course, our owner. Um, and we knew it was going to have to be a, a massive summer to get the players in to help us completely change the brand of football we were trying to play. Um, mm. I personally, Hodgson would have stayed. He would happily would have stayed. Yeah. It was a decision from the club to move uh, past Hodgson and get someone else in. Um, we went through a couple managers who snubbed us to be completely honest with you mm. um before we inevitably got to to Vieira um but in a way I think it was destined to happen because we needed someone fresh yeah relatively unproven but fresh ideas and he'd obviously come in done his research on the club um and yeah we'll, we'll get into the players he brought in um I don't think there's two players that are, are kind of more important for our system we played last season than Mark Gaye and Joachim Anderson. Mm. Uh, those are our two main targets. Basically a combined total of £40 million between them, yeah. um, which for, for Crystal Palace Football Club is obscene, um, mm. if I'm being honest. But they're the players that, that the club had profiled as being the players to help us play this football. And 
I couldn't have asked for two better signings for my mm. football club, to be honest. Um, it all starts from them, really, with what we did last season. The passing out from the back, playing short from the keeper to the centre-backs. And when you've got two composed heads, like those two on the ball, sees your, you know, yeah. the pitch just opens up. You've got so many different options. Um, Tyreek Mitchell playing next to him. He's, he's mm. growing every time he steps on the yeah. pitch. Fantastic season. Nathaniel Klein deserves a shout out. He, he was mm. very consistent last season. Um, we brought in Conor Gallagher on loan, obviously. Yeah. Hugely important that he's pressing um, and his contributions um, in the attacking third. Um, Elise was one, obviously, you mentioned. Yeah. Very exciting player. Mm. I don't think we've seen the start of what he's capable of doing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, already shown in, you know, there's already interest there from top clubs yeah. in the Premier League. Chelsea have been linked, Arsenal have been linked, United have been linked. Not heavily, not at this stage, no. um, but inevitably he will go. I've no doubt about mm. that. Um, but yeah, the, the, the club did some unbelievable business to help Vieira mm. play the system he wants to play. Um, and it was the best football I've seen as a Crystal Palace fan, and I'm sure. 95% of the fan base uh, would agree with me. You've always got that 5%. Yeah. I'll, I'll account for that 5% because I'll be careful what people say on Twitter. Um, <laughs> but seriously, it, it was a really impressive task that Vieira did, um, along with Steve Parrish and Dougie Friedman. And I think you uh, kind of reminded me uh, before we went online um, that you uh, had a prediction that you made with Rory on our podcast, which was that... You wanted to ensure that you stayed up in the league, which you achieved. You wanted to make sure that the style of philosophy in terms of the football was better, and that's certainly what was achieved. But more importantly, you had a cup run as well. So let's talk about that cup run as well. So you ended up in the semi-finals. Um, yeah, incredible run for you know a club like Palace, and that's no disparagement on Palace. It's just a fact of you normally see the big teams kind of be at that stage. So it's nice to actually see like a Palace at that stage personally like I was really gunning for you guys to uh do one over on Chelsea but unfortunately yeah it was just the quality on the day it seems unfortunately that sort of swayed it in Chelsea's favor but again even in that semi-final performance they did themselves proud so yeah reliving that kind of semi-final and that cup run what do you make of that kind of team as well it was remarkable to get to where we got to um in the first season under a new manager mm -hmm. new system new players um, to have got to Wembley was was just fantastic. Um, all we really wanted was a day out when we got there. We, we knew coming up against Chelsea, it was very unlikely we were going to be able to beat them. Mm. I would have liked to have given it more of a go, uh, more of a go on the day. A lot of people agree with me. Um, we just didn't get at Chelsea as much as we probably should have done or would have liked to. Mm. Uh, but what can you do against a team like that? You you know at the time defending champions of Europe. So we didn't yeah. really stand a chance. But um, no, it was a fantastic cup run. It really was. We, we really were not scared to play anyone we came up against. We probably had a pretty favourable run in, I'd say. Mm. Um, a lot of home fixtures, which helps massively at Sellers Park. Um, you can be really confident when, when any team comes to Sellers Park that you're going to give them a tough game, especially under Vieira. We weren't always yeah. saying that on Robertson. Um but some really good games in there. We, we beat Everton pretty convincingly. Uh, beat Mirwall away at the Den, yeah. which is always nice. Um, <laughs> and, you know, there a few other nice games mixed in there. We had, we had a really friendly uh, game against Hartlepool, which was... That yes, was the yeah. Um, yeah. Very nice club, by the way. If there are any Hartlepool fans watching, for whatever reason, um, really, you know, it's really good to kind of come across their club. Um, their manager at the time uh, and his story. It, it was a fantastic game. And that's what the Cup's all about. You know, mm. a friend, friendly games, you can't take it too seriously. Um, yeah. gut, we didn't go the full way. I think it probably is only a matter of time before we get something. Um, mm. I might still be here in 15 years saying that. <laughs> Very possible being a Crystal Palace fan. But we, we do all feel like we're on the verge of something. And I think it's only a matter of time before something gives way um, and when we get to lift the trophy of some sort. But uh, yeah. no, it, it, it was a fantastic cup run and credit to the team because they were absolutely fantastic. Nothing but positive vibes, definitely, from this Palace side. So 
let's talk about the transfer wish list and those that you've managed to secure. So I think the big one that stands out is Czech Tokore, who that you bought from Lund. So that's a big signing at 19 million. As it sounds like a very small amount, but these days that's still quite kind of considered quite a big amount for a club like Palace. You also brought in, obviously, Sam Johnson on a free from West Bromwich Albion. So I suspect he's going to be more competitive edge in that goalkeeping department. But the player that we did want to talk about is Malcolm Elboe from Derby. Um, obviously, that's uh, undisclosed because that will be subject to a tribunal because of his age. But he's a talented player. I did uh, kind of talk to you offline about the fact that I came across a tweet that kind of said, yeah, vibes of Sahar. So um, this is a player that you were really interested in to talk about as well. But yeah, what, what do you make of Malcolm Aboy? Uh, before I get into Malcolm, I mean, that, that is a very mm. exciting one to talk about. You're right on Czech Decore. Um, hell of a lot of money for Crystal Palace still. I think it might be our third, probably fourth most expensive signing mm. ever. Um, but going into the window, Decore was our main target. Vieira's main target. We needed a midfielder. And um, we secured him. So very, very happy with that one. Mm. Um, going into to Malcolm Ebioe, I mean, we all say it differently. Yes. It'll be one of those. I'm sure we'll get there eventually. Um, but very, very good pickup from us. Did come out of nowhere, to be honest. Um, he followed his former teammate, Luke Plange, uh, from the Derby yes, to yeah. Crystal Palace route. Another very talented youngster. Um, yeah. But... It was very odd because he, he seemed at one point nailed on to go to Man United. Um, mm. And he had Tottenham and definitely Monaco uh, circling in the distance, hopefully trying to get his signature. And we, we swept in and, and, and got him. And from what I've read, that was all down to Dougie Friedman and the persistence mm. he showed to, to get that over the line, um, convincing the player that Crystal Palace was for him. And from what I've seen of him, uh, already he looks very talented you, you won't go on youtube and see him scoring 50 goals last season no you won't, you won't see his stats blow you away he is still very raw very mm. very young um but he's got all the attributes to really cause problems at a high level i saw him play against man united first mm. team the other day by far and away the brightest prospect on our team um causing them a lot of problems lot of pace he's got um and i think under Vieira's careful watch he could become a very very special player um in a team with zaha mm. i mean you, you, this guy's going to be on the training ground with zaha eze elise on a weekly basis there's no yeah. way he's not going to improve um drastically but yeah very very exciting signing uh mm. and I, I actually read from fabrizio Romano the other day uh that we have blocked loan move for him so All right. whether that was the original plan, I, I couldn't tell you. Um, mm. I, I, I probably would have said he would have gone out on loan late. Uh, yeah. But the noises from the club now is he's going nowhere. So mm. it'd be very interesting to watch him. Um, the other signings we've made, Sam Johnston on a free, incredible bit of business. Um, I'm very surprised other Premier League clubs didn't go in. He's not going to be a world beater. Yeah. I'm not saying he's going to be England's number one in a year's time, but for his experience to get anyone like that on a free, still relatively young. Mm -hmm. so it's this. Um, and the other one who hopefully, um, if one of Kurt's predictions can can come true, uh, live on on live on air, <laughs> yeah. um, hopefully Chris Richards will be announced tomorrow yeah. um, for pr another substantial fee. I imagine that would be around fifteen million pounds for us, which is a lot. Would say mm. um he's a defender comfortable on both feet uh relatively quick um at six foot two he's got international experience with the united states um and hopefully either he comes in and really pushes gay and anderson to their limits in terms of what they can produce or he slots in at right back which i've heard he's more than capable of doing um mm. so that's the ones we've got in so far I'm sure you're going to ask me in a second um, yeah. who I want in, which is a yeah. different story, but very solid business so far. Yeah, no, I was definitely going to reflect on a good bit of business so far. So, yeah, let's talk about who you'd like to have in. But more importantly also, do you think there's maybe scope for other positions that maybe we haven't mentioned that need filling in at Palace as well? Yes, yeah, I, I do for sure. Um, 
there's been reports in the last week that Christian Benteke might be off. Okay. Um, Wolves are apparently very interested from what I've heard. Don't know how true that is. Mm. Um, but that has been the story from the Palace camp, as far as I've been aware, all, all window is in order for us to get attacking players in, at least one, maybe two will have to leave. Mm. Um, so Benteke leaving will almost certainly see an attack, at least one attacking player come in in his place. Mm. So I'm quite excited to see what we do with that. I've not heard of actually any names being linked in that position. Um, mm. but almost certainly going to get another midfielder. That is that is for sure. Um, we're very, even though we've got a lot of names in the midfield, there's not really anyone that screams to be good enough at the moment. Um, mm. but Jeff Schlupp is a very solid player. Don't get me wrong. I don't think he deserves to be dropped, but mm. it will likely be the Kure Eze being nailed on. And I imagine we'll get someone else into challenge the midfield spot. Um, and maybe even another defender for cover. So I, I'd expect another three players to come in, maybe one of those being a low player. And um, briefly, if we can also do so, um, let's talk about potential players linked with a move. And the one that seems to be cropping up more recently is uh, Zahar Taroma, which, yeah, has taken us a bit by surprise because I thought, you know, Zahar might see out his career at Palace. But I think he's always been kind of like whispered about potentially moving on to a bigger club if that opportunity ever came up. I think he uh, was quoted as saying if a Champions League club was ever in for him, then he would obviously jump ship. Um, not music to the ears of Crystal Palace fans, I'm sure, but obviously there does seem to be some interest. I don't know how deep it goes, but again, if that could be used to reinvest into that Palace team, would you take it? It, it would have to be such a weird deal to, mm. to, to happen. Um, have heard Roma being interested. It did come out of nowhere. Then again, you've got Jose Mourinho assembling yeah. his almost Premier League misfits 11. Yeah, there, exactly. Tammy Abraham. Yeah. I know we had Maitland Niles uh, um, on loan. He's got Chris Smalling. He's got a few yeah. others. Not that I, mean, I think Zaha's better than all those players by some way, mm. by the way, but just in terms of his attitude and things like that. Um, yeah. It could well happen. I mean, I know they've just gone and got the Bala, Roma. Yeah. So with the wages he's likely to be on, it's going to be very tough. Um, mm. A lot of people don't understand that, that they say Crystal Palace are holding him hostage. Um, what's he still doing there? He's on £130,000 a week. Mm. He's our highest paid player ever, likely to be for a long time. Um, unless Roma are willing to pay or match that or even pay mm. him more. Which yeah. Foreign clubs just do not pay that much unless you're Real Madrid, Barcelona, PSG, Bayern. I mean, Bayern even don't really pay the players too much. Um, but it would have to be a very weird deal. Another, a lot of people overlook the fact that Man United still have a 20% um, sell-on clause. Mm. So any money that we do make from Zaha will be going, a bit of it will be going to them. Um, I think the only way in which Zaha leaves the club is if it was a very attractive player swap deal. Mm. Um, a deal which I don't think Roma can can give us, if I'm honest. Um, I'm happy to be proven wrong. You know, if, yeah. if, if they want to give us Tammy, then <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll sit down and, and, and talk business. But um, yeah, it, it will be a very strange one. Never say never. Um, yeah. I think if it's going to go, it will have to be soon. That will always be our stance in the transfer windows when it comes to Zaha. We do not want to be left waiting. We do not want to have uncertainty. If he's going to go, go now so we can replace him. Yeah. So, Kurt, I'm going to push you and let's just assume the window has been slammed shut. You are stuck with the players that you have bought in. But more importantly, we will caveat this by saying we are recording on the 25th of July, so no one shoots you down for this prediction. Where do you anticipate Palace to end up by the end of this season? Or more importantly, where do you think Crystal Palace should aspire to finish? We've got to do one better than last season. Um, somehow, Vieira managed to get quite a good league finish last mm. season, despite everything going on. Um, but he's getting the players he wants in now. I mean, Dekure, number one, as we said, Johnson, Aboe, Richards. Yeah. If it's slammed shut right now, I'd be disappointed because Richards is on the verge. So let, let's give yeah. it a <laughs> um, But yeah, it, I'd like to say top half. We, we missed out on it narrowly last season. That would be 
what I'd like, top half. Going any higher is getting a bit unrealistic with Newcastle. Um, yeah, even exactly. Villa, Villa just spending stupid amounts of money. Um, it's so hard to keep up. But 10th, mm. I'd be very happy. A bit, bit of a controversial one here. Um, Go on. The FA Cup now is so difficult to, to, to raise that cup unless you are a mm. heavy hitter. Um, it's been renowned for Man City and Chelsea claiming yeah. it every year. Last team not to was Leicester. And Leicester were no pushovers the year they yeah, won it. Exactly. So I would like to maybe not try to push. It'd be nice to. Yeah. What I'm trying to say is I'd actually love to give the Carabao Cup a massive go. Um, yeah. People call it whatever they want. For us, it'd be huge. And I think we stand a chance. I'd love to properly go hammer and tongs at it and yeah, why you know, not lift something. Uh, so that would be the dream. Uh, but yeah, it just seeing what we're seeing, hitting a few big boys along the way, which we did last season, um, and getting yeah. top up football would probably be a very good season for Crystal Palace. Yeah, no, definitely. With the attacking flair that you've got in that team, I definitely could see you guys doing another cup run. I think you're just missing maybe a striker. And I appreciate you guys have got Edward. Again, we haven't mentioned him in this episode, but again, potentially he might grow into it next season. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like whether it be someone like Edward or another striker, that's what you're potentially missing. But we'll wait and see. Yes. But more importantly, viewers, what do you think? Do you agree with Kurt? Do you believe Palace could sustain a top 10 finish or potentially even lifting that Carabao Cup? Let's wait and see. Drop us your comments below. But many thanks to you, Kurt. And obviously, people can find his work on Twitter. So he's just kindly put that in there as well for everyone to see. But more importantly, we'll see you at the next episode. For now, take care, everyone. <laughs>